Piana Sisters Twisted Dreams is a good game, but it's a little rough around the edges, with some mechanics that are kind of janky, and some mechanics that just aren't explained very well. In this video I will show off a few interesting tricks in Guiana Sisters Twisted Dreams that really will not help you at all in beating the game, but can make a few sections of gameplay flow a little bit better, or just let you have a little bit more fun doing silly things. First I'll talk about several universal tricks, and then one glitch that was discovered that is very useful for speedrunning, but is not in the Switch version of the game. First, a technique that is very much intended. You have one jump, but it can be used mid-air instead of off the ground. If you walk off the edge of a platform and then hit jump, you can jump in mid-air. This can be very useful for clearing gaps like this, where the game instructs you to dash up, but you don't really have to. The PC version of the game never tells you you can do this. The console versions can on the loading screens, and the Switch version will tell you this several times in-game as well. So this was clearly intended, but you never have to actually do this to complete the game. Next, springs. These things can be a pain. Sometimes it just feels really arbitrary whether you're going to get a full height jump off of them. However, an easy way to always get full height off a spring is to dash into it. Doesn't matter if you dash down from above or dash into it from the side, if you dash into a spring you will always get launched to the full height. This also applies to things that act like springs. In later levels of the game you will encounter alien spike box enemies. In one world, they're a box that has spikes coming out of it. In the other world, they're an alien that moves around a little bit. You're supposed to jump on the alien to knock it out, which will flip the spike box over so you can use it as a safe trampoline, but that's a huge waste of time. Instead, just dash into the side of the spike box. You will launch up off of it like it's a spring. This lets you go through areas a lot faster, and in some areas it seems like it's an intended part of the flow of the area instead of slowing down to flip a box. However, this is not always useful, and it certainly doesn't put you any higher in the air than doing this normally would, so it won't let you skip any sections or anything. Also, since I just talked about mid-air jumps, while you do get a mid-air jump off of a spring, you do not get a mid-air jump after being launched by a spike box. Dash curling. While it may seem like your dash move can only go in a straight line in eight directions, that is actually incorrect. During a dash, you can actually curl it around, like this. You can angle it a slight bit, or you can go in a complete half circle if you really want to. This is a nearly useless technique. It is used in one specific place in a speed run, but other than that it just looks cool. If you want to break boxes that are arranged in a weird grid, maybe it can be useful. The camera. In this game, you can control the camera with the right stick if you're playing on controller. This lets you look ahead or behind or up or down to try to see platforms you might want to jump to. I'm pretty sure the game actually does tell you this at some point, but I've never seen anyone else playing the game actually use it. And to be fair, it's really not very useful at all. But hey, this is a video about weird tips and tricks that aren't really helpful for beating the game, so I may as well include this here. And now for the trick that actually breaks open a few levels. Infinite wall jumps. This trick is extremely easy to perform. And again, this does not work in the Owltimate edition on the Switch, but it works in every other version of the game. Stand next to a wall that is to your right. Why does this matter? I have no idea. Now, press jump repeatedly. Congratulations, you just used infinite wall jumps. I don't know why this glitch exists, but it does, and it's hilarious. Now, what is this useful for? Surprisingly, this glitch is actually not very useful in a lot of levels. In a speedrun, there's several small time saves and a couple checkpoint skips, but surprisingly, just being able to get really high up walls to your right doesn't help a lot of the time. There's often lips you can't get under, or just there's really nothing useful up there. Oftentimes it can be fun to mess with, but isn't very fast. For example, you can completely skip pretty much all of level 3-3 Haunted Swamp, but the speedrun doesn't do that, because it's much faster just to run through the level the normal way. Also, this is a good way to soft block yourself by getting out of bounds and finding some place you're not supposed to be with no way out of it. The most fun thing you can do with this glitch, actually, is find a level where you can get completely out of bounds of the level, even past any kill planes. The ending of level 2-1 is perfect for this. We're at the goal here, I'm just gonna jump up and over the goal, go past it, and fall into infinity. You'll fall for a while, and eventually you'll fall so far out of bounds that the background starts glitching up, at which point you can use the camera to move around and draw silly things on the screen. 
And you have to quit out of the level once you've done this, because there's nothing down there to kill you, so you're just going to fall forever. So that's all the tips I have for this video. However, I also want to take a second now and talk about the history of infinite wall jumps, because it has not been recorded anywhere. So I did a lot of the development for infinite wall jumps, but I didn't find it. Back in 2014 when I was in college, actually my roommate found infinite wall jumps. He was playing through the game, got to this point here in level 1-3, and fell into this pit, and thought, man, I want to jump out of this pit, so we did. I don't know how many people have independently found this glitch, but no one in the speedrun community knew about it. Obviously this had some huge immediate applications, but we didn't actually know about the biggest skips for a while. I say for a while because I actually hadn't played Alverlord at this point. The first time I played level 2 of Alverlord, I found an infinite wall jumps glitch to skip directly to the end of the level. For the longest time I actually did not have the steam achievement for beating all the sections of level 2, because I hadn't. So this discovery had an immediate impact on the speedrun, which was seen at Summer Games Done Quick 2014, when Crate ran Guiana Sisters Alverlord. And I'll just say, Crate really did not like this discovery. Not because new glitches being discovered for a game are bad, but because this specific level, Alverlord Level 2, was a really fun, well-optimized speedrun at that point. It was probably the coolest level in Alverlord. So that's the most broken level. It's kind of unfortunate because it's a cool level, but the skip is really fast. But my discovery kind of removed three minutes of cool platforming and replaced it with under 40 seconds of beelining to one goal and then falling to the end of the level. Sorry, Crate. There is one other level that we eventually found to be very, very broken as well. I also found this skip, but it took a lot longer to find. Level 3-2 Emerald Cliffs is a long downward S-bend of a path, going back and forth and back and forth. There's a nice wall here you can climb up, but there's a huge lip at the top, so we could never get over around to the right side of the level. But the ending of the level is completely encased anyway, so we'd only be able to fall way out of bounds and not actually reach the goal. However, after a lot of screwing around, I found out that you could go over to the left side of the level off of this wall, and you can fall down the left side of the level. I don't know why there's these nice solid platforms over here. Once you get to the bottom of the level here, you have a problem of, you're well below the rest of the level at this point, so how are you supposed to get back up into the level? Well, there's this big pit at the bottom of the level you can just barely clip back into, hovering across, because this wall is not particularly solid here. And if you twirl all the way over here, you can just land on this little low platform with a teleporter that will take you to a secret area in the level with a bonus gem. And from this little platform, you can then walk off the other side of it and use your mid-air jump to start an infinite wall jump up to here to get back to the main level. And from that point, you are a single checkpoint away from the end. You have just skipped the entirety of level 3-2. So those are my two big contributions to the speedrun. I know this doesn't really have much to do with the original topic of this video, but like I said, there was never any recorded history of this development in the speedrun, so I wanted to make it known. There's been some other cool discoveries that I didn't really have much of a part in. I helped find the out of bounds to the first boss, but I didn't really do any development on strats to beat the first boss, or double hits or anything like that. And then, by far the biggest skip in the game, Gurgle Walkie Skip, which skips the worst phase of the final boss, which is heavily RNG based in a run that basically had no RNG whatsoever otherwise, I didn't do anything on. But anyway, that's enough talking about the speed run as this long aside at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the tricks I talked about at the start of this video, and I hope you enjoy playing Guiana Sisters Twisted Dreams. That's all, thanks for watching.